If you were handed $10 billion right now, what would you still never buy? The $5 Coke in my hotel mini fridge. Video game microtransactions such as loot boxes, amongst many other things. Those massive mansions. Never understood why do you need 100 rooms and bathrooms. Winrar. JK. I'd buy like 4 of them. Extended warranty on my car. Gas station egg salad sandwich. Any food wrapped in gold leaf. Adds nothing in terms of flavor, looks tacky and sticks to your teeth. Gucci and other overpriced clothes. Men who are sure of not wanting kids, what's stopping you from getting a vasectomy? I pursued a vasectomy in my early 30s and had two doctors tell me I was too young and might change my mind later. Never mind that I was, and still am, happily married to a woman that also doesn't want kids. Kind of gave up after that, but been thinking about trying again recently. There is no need, you can't have kids if you don't have sex. As a person who has had one done, I have asked this question to a few people too. The most common answer I hear is, I don't have a thousand dollars to pay for it, followed up by a close second of, my insurance won't cover it, or, I don't have insurance. Edit. Added clarification, I live in the part of the United States that has both a high cost of living and mostly low income jobs. Yes, the reasons people gave me are a concern for this topic, as these factors make the option out of reach for them. Parents of Reddit whose children have dated awful people, who was the worst? Why? My brother dated a girl who pretended to have cancer when she thought, correctly, he was going to break up with her. Her parents went along with it. Here's the crazy part, my dad is an oncologist. This girl could have chosen any other disease, or maybe even sanity, but she went with cancer. My dad was asking for the name of her doctor, offering to help out, but she was strangely vague and dismissive. We all felt suspicious and we felt like shit for feeling suspicious. It took six weeks but my brother managed to get her mom alone, questioned her a little and found out her daughter wasn't sick. Well, dot not physically. People who actually like their jobs, what do you do? I am a loader for a distribution warehouse as my 40-hour job. I like it, but I keep it for the money and health insurance. But my second job, I am the regional director for a non-for-profit that helps guys with transitional housing when they get out of prison. We also help homeless guys on occasion and people who just need a hand up. That is my real passion. I'm just here to find inspiration for a career change. I'm an environmental geologist. I like uncovering the history of a property and working outdoors is enjoyable when the weather is nice. I don't love every aspect, of course. Paperwork can be tedious, often the weather is bad, and telling clients bad news is intimidating, but it's satisfying when the pieces of a problem fall together. Pilots, what's the scariest stuff you've seen while flying? Power lines directly in front of me at night that weren't charted and were exactly at helicopter grabbing altitude. Smoke in the cockpit when I landed. Thankfully it was when I landed. Had to push the airplane, small Cessna, off the runway. Almost had two mid-air collisions. One due to a new pilot not being where he should be, another due to control telling me an aircraft was at me 11 o'clock when really it was at me 2 o'clock. And the coolest was a meteor that burned up directly in front of me. Same altitude, straight ahead. I have no idea how far away it was, but it was bright, and so pretty. Went through a spectrum of colors as it burned. What do you hate with a passion? Waking up 10 minutes before the alarm clock and just falling back asleep in time for the alarm to start going off. Scam calls and texts, especially when you try blocking them with your phone and they somehow bypass that shit. People who litter, specifically in nature and national parks. I've seen so many rivers, trails, park, etc. be turned into dumps because people refuse to throw away their trash. How fucking lazy do you have to be that you can't hold onto your trash until you find the right place to throw it away? And it's not like that stuff was already there. You brought that shit there. Why can't you bring that shit back? That shit just pisses he off. Bring a trash bag. Stuff it in your pocket. Do something god damn it. Incredibly confident stupid people who are certain they are correct about every little thing. Intrusive advertising. Or, really most advertising. I actively go out of my way to avoid it. What doesn't need to exist anymore but won't go away? Bed bugs. Zero ecological value, and an expensive nightmare to eradicate. I've never had them but I've heard enough horror stories to hope I never will. Fax machines. No, healthcare provider, I do not have access to a fax machine. Fuck HIPAA, and email me my fucking documents. News being opinionated and not providing all the facts. Expensive coffins and embalming. Just throw me in a hole or burn me when I die. 
I will not come back as a ghost to haunt anyone, I promise. What fan theory do you 100% accept as true? Andy's parents are in the middle of a divorce when the first Toy Story is taking place. Willy Wonka knew what he was doing. There was no seat for Augustus aboard that boat. He knew Augustus Gloop would fall in there. Scooby-Doo is a show about draft dodgers during the Vietnam War. Barney from How I Met Your Mother isn't actually as much of a womanizer as Ted says he is. Ted's an unreliable narrator and could have presented this image of Barney to his kids either because he was jealous of Barney's relationship with Robin, or because he wants Barney to look unsuitable for her. That way, Ted's kids see Ted and Robin as soulmates. What free online service you're surprised that people don't use more often? Remove.bg is a favorite of mine. Pretty much completely removes the background out of any image almost instantly. Works way better than Photoshop's built-in tools that accomplish the same thing. Khan Academy. They have videos about math, science, etc. I love PDF you can literally do everything on that page with your PDFs, join them, turn them into Word, etc. And totally free. Printfriendly.com you can only print out the elements of a web page that you want. Make it easier on the eyes, and save paper. Hoopla. Free movies, books, audiobooks, music, ebooks, etc. All free with a library card. What has absolutely no real reason for being so expensive? Anything to do with weddings, death, babies. College textbooks. I had a professor that was really against the college textbook industry and said it was a huge scam, so for the class one took with him he used a textbook that he wrote and provided a PDF version of it for free to all of us. Adobe products. It's a massive scam that they switch to a monthly fee as it's killed any incentive for them to make meaningful improvements and they kill or buy up any competitors. Human skeletons, there are billions of us and millions die every day. Why the $5,000 plus price tag? Edit. I know at most it's just a couple hundred thousand a day but bones do be pricey. What have you discovered is much more fragile than you thought? A lot of construction. As a kid I always trusted that things like walls, railings, and other infrastructure was built to actually be durable and withstand a bit of roughhousing. When I got to be a teen I realized I couldn't always count on that and the world as a whole became a lot less solid feeling. Makes me have an appreciation for good construction and how shoddily a lot of things tend to be built today. My father. I'm 35 years old and two years ago my dad retired at the age of 67. A few months after that the doctors told him he has cancer. He is, was a marine and has always been a good dad. I've seen a fragile side of him these past two years while he comes to grips with his odds of survival. Life's a bitch. What if God came down one day and said, it's pronounced, Jode, then left. A large chunk of my taking the Lord's name in vain would go away. Do you want a holy war? Because that's how you get a holy war. He would also say, my name isn't God. Then he would pronounce his name and everyone's faces would melt. Then all of Scandinavia will pronounce it like, Yod, and the Spanish will pronounce it like, Hod. It's been seven years since the creator of gifts confirmed the correct pronunciation of the word. This just proves that nobody on the internet has forgiven him. What is a basic computer skill you were shocked some people don't have? Reading. As a tech supporter I get the stupidest questions. Client. There is a prompt here that says, your computer needs to reboot to finish installing updates. Click here to restart. What does that mean? Me. It means your computer installed updates and needs to reboot. Client. How do I do that? Me. Click on the prompt to restart. My college roommate didn't know he could change his desktop background. He was blown away and went to show it to one of our other friends, who was also blown away because she didn't know you could change the background. You'd be surprised how many folk don't know what to type into search engines to find what they're looking for. Shape recognition. Does the end of the cable look like the hole in the machine? It's amazing how many people can't figure that out at work. What is a clear sign of you getting older? I found myself just wandering around the aisles of Lowe's, not looking for anything in particular and had a moment of self-clarity, I'm old. You don't dare leave the house without peeing. You often prefer a light dish to fried food because the latter is indeed tastier, but it's not worth the trouble. I genuinely, not sarcasm, not a meme, have no idea what slang teenagers use these days. I have absolutely zero context or exposure to any cultural influences teenagers even have. 
edit. There are a few dozen responses at this point to my post, almost all of which have examples of young person slang. I understand none of it. I really hope some of you jokesters are pranking me by giving me some fake slang to use. That would be hilarious, but honestly, it's kind of fun reading what slang people use these days. I was pretty sure things aren't fire anymore, but maybe that's still used? What is a legal scam that is still happening in 2022? Printing fee for digital tickets. Ticketmaster. WTF is a handling fee when I am the one handling my own phone? Edit. I was just making a flip smart ass answer to the scam question. I had no idea it was this much of a problem. Law. Congress officials being allowed to trade stocks. Look, op, if you want to get in on some legal scam, you have to do your own research. That's why I recommend you buy my book, what you can do to legally become rich in 12 easy lessons. Just 24 easy payments of $199.99 and you will have the secrets to being a millionaire unveiled right before your eyes. What is a life hack that seems fake, but is a true lifesaver? If you're having trouble staying awake in class, at a meeting, see how long you can keep one of your feet lifted slightly off the ground. If a man is in an accident, car, ladder fall, etc., and he gets an erection, don't move him. He has a spinal injury. Rubbing vegetable oil, or any cooking oil, on your hands after you cut up jalapenos or other hot peppers. It gets rid of the awfulness that would normally be left on your hands from the peppers. I rub my hands with oil and then wash it off with dish soap. I can totally remove my contacts after doing this. It's crazy how well this works. What is a not fun fact? There is a whale called 52 Blue that only sings at their frequency meaning it can't communicate with other whales. It is nicknamed the loneliest whale on the planet. In Australia there is a plant called the Gimpy Gimpy which has such a severe sting that horses who brush against it throw themselves off cliffs because they'd rather die than continue to experience the pain. Sloths only have enough energy for their weekly toilet trip to the jungle floor. If the baby falls from their underside in the trees onto the floor, they choose to preserve their energy and leave it to be eaten. Penguins rape the hell out of anything that looks vaguely penguin-like or doesn't move. In fact, it was so rampant, that the 1910-13 Scott Antarctic Expedition decided it was best not to bring it up so society wouldn't have to deal with the issue it would bring up. Scientists witnessed males having sex with other males and also with dead females, including several that had died the previous year. He also saw them sexually coerce females and chicks and occasionally kill them. The scientists blamed this astonishing depravity on hooligan males and wrote down his observations in Greek so that only an educated gentleman would understand the horrors he had witnessed. What is a red flag from an employer that people might not immediately recognize as a red flag? A couple old senior partners, lots of young employees and nothing in between. That means there's no opportunity to move up, they can't get people to stay, and can't get lateral transfers. They work young folks for as long as they can, and the young folks leave once they figure out the company sucks. Any job ad that doesn't mention the name of the company should raise suspicions, doubly so if it's anything to do with sales. Got done by that trick once. Turned up to the interview and that job was going door to door selling vacuums for Kirby vacuums. They claim that overtime isn't mandatory and workers stay longer by choice. The kindest thing an HR person has ever done for me was be truthful in an interview when I asked what the typical work week looked like. It was a new manufacturing facility and they were getting off the ground and they said typically 60 to 70 hours weeks were expected. Made my decision much easier between that and another job. What is something Americans will never understand? Cricket. I understand all of these things pretty well as an American. Except for cricket. Whoever answered cricket, well done don't really understand it, and probably never will. American here, paying to use the restroom, that being from a place and having ancestors from a place are not the same thing. Having only two political parties is terrible, that in some places we can't just return things we have bought because we don't like them. I find it strange, some, Americans think Europe is just one entity that is comparable to the USA it's not. Countries are not comparable to states. The differences between Poland and Spain are far greater than those between California and Florida. What is something ancient that only an internet veteran can remember? Netscape Navigator. AOL sending disks through the mail offering 500 hours of free web access. Alta Vista. Ask Jeeves. Printing out pages and pages of cheat codes for games. When a TV show would say to check out their website at http, www. Having to spell it out every time. 
not having internet and playing Minesweeper, Solitaire, and Pinball instead. Weird little squares with blue and red on them that would sort of take the place of graphics until the graphics would actually load. The text would be visible but the graphics wouldn't be there yet. What is something that was used heavily in the year 2000, but it's almost never used today? Any sort of dedicated music playing device, before that just became a part of your phone. Rewritable CDs. I used to burn so many mixed CDs after downloading from Napster, BearShare, LimeWire, FrostWire. Then my mother would call, disconnecting the internet and I would have to start the download all over again. Except one file wasn't an MP3, but a virus. I would just reinstall Windows before my mom got home as we saved every picture and document on a zip drive, then those fancy jazz drives. Download managers. Start the download right after mom goes to bed, wake up before her to pause the download and disconnect the dial-up connection, resume tomorrow night. Repeat. Aim and MSN messenger. Edit. Sweet Jesus this blew up. Thank y'all for bringing back even more memories of the late 90s early 2000s rushing home to fire up the dial-up and start chatting with the same friends I'd already spent hours talking to that day. To whichever one of you guys sent the silver you have officially made my day with, if I'm not mistaken, my first ever award. Thank you man. Edit again. Wholesome and gold awards too. Much appreciated. I can't believe what I expected to be a throwaway comment that would quickly disappear achieved all this. What is your comfort show you re-watch when you're sad or sick? Futurama. Adventure Time. Calming and Happy. Arrested Development. Reminds me of my family when I'm away from them. Regular show, never disappoints and always gives me a nice good laugh. Gravity Falls. It never fails to make me feel better, especially when I notice something I didn't see before. Malcolm in the Middle. King of the Hill. I've seen every episode, in order, at least six times at this point. It used to be what I watched in the background while playing video games that didn't exactly require 100% attention all the time. If somebody mentions any part of an episode one can probably explain the plot of the rest of that episode tbh. What legendary reddit event does every redditor need to know about? That one redditor that saved a dude's life by telling him to check the co2 monitor. For me definitely the whole reddit island incident. r reddit island for more coverage. Newer sub r reddit underscore island basically some people on reddit decided to buy up a whole island but knowing their redditors things didn't go as planned edit here's a video that explains it very well there are so many to choose from anyone else remember that thread where people were talking about pooping and discovered there was a 50 50 split of people that wiped their butt while seated and another group that stood to do it and neither group realized the other existed swamps of dagoba you have been warned what life-changing item can you buy for less than $100? A king-sized blanket for a queen-sized bed. A dash cam for your car can protect you from wrongful claims also vandalisms and theft. May sound simple, but a good pillow. It is amazing the change in body aches and sleep you see when you have a good pillow that fits you. A good shop vac. You will not believe how many uses around the house you'll find for it. Cobweb removal, water removal, gravel removal, vent cleaning, soot trap cleaning, after a good scrub since it's likely dirty from other tasks, car vacuuming, dust sucking, the list goes on. Seriously if you plan to buy or already own a home go get a shop vac. A 10 foot charging cable. Or a quality pair of shoes. What was the best purchase you made during the pandemic? I bought a doorbell camera. I was internally debating if I had wasted money on it or not when I realized it caught a clip of my best friend who passed away last summer doubled over in laughter and having his pants fall down around his ankles while he was trying to catch his breath. Worth every penny. Washing machine around the start of the pandemic. We used to haul the clothes to a laundromat and fold them there. A new sewing machine to make masks and a Nintendo Switch to live on an island and pretend the world isn't falling apart. Squat rack. Took a long time to get everything set up, but it was worth the wait. House. Right before prices skyrocketed and interest rates were still low. What was the best thing you ever learned from a therapist? People don't know what you're thinking or wanting if you don't say it. If you don't communicate your emotions and thoughts, you can't expect people to mind read, and then get upset at them for not doing what you expected. You can step back and think about your thoughts. I know that sounds obvious, but it was not obvious to me as an angry, sad, 17-year-old. Diagnosed with ADHD at 30. That advice probably saved me from making a ton of impulsive mistakes over the years. My worth is not determined by my productivity. 
being raised by a workaholic marine and then having a series of nightmare bosses led me to have a severe guilt spiral if I spent a most of day not doing something. What wedding moment made you think? They are not going to last long. Groom got into a fist fight with the father of the bride. Split after four months. Context groom and bride's dad. Actually most people in these families if I'm honest, have pretty aggressive drinking problems. Father-in-law has always hated him. I wasn't around for what actually set it off but it ended when the bride got in the middle, got an elbow in the eye and the happy couple left for the night. This was in rural Canada. Not Letterkenny, but basically Letterkenny. I'd say the father-in-law won the fight though. The entire bridal party, including parents of the wedded couple, entering into a betting pool of how long the marriage would last, at the wedding reception. IIRC the best man won, price is right rules, at 14 months. I was the best man at a wedding a few years back. At the rehearsal dinner, his future in-laws were treating him like crap. They were bossing him around, making him do crap, and talking down to him. They didn't let him hang out with his groomsmen afterwards while the bride went out and got drunk. They are now divorced. Edit to add a little detail. Yes he should have stood up for himself. His ex's parents were making him do crap for the wedding the next day and he was too nice to say no. For you youngsters out there, this is cliche, but you really do marry the family and the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, a lot of the times. What's an old person activity that you thoroughly enjoy? Have you ever sat in a rocking chair? They're amazing. I moved from a very busy road to a cul-de-sac at the edge of the city and now so few cars drive by that I like spying on people when something is going on outside. I've been learning to crochet recently, very satisfying to just put on a podcast and make something. Telling people to get off my property. Naps and eating supper at 1600. Sending a handwritten thank you note when someone gives you a generous gift or does something extra special for you. Crosswords and jigsaw puzzles. Got to keep the mind sharp. What's your favorite Pokemon? I've always had a soft spot for Eevee, and the Eeveelutions. I know nothing about Pokemon but I think Rayquaza looks cool. Ninetales. It has been my favorite since Gen 1 because it was so elegant and beautiful. I also really like Arcanine and Flareon. I might have a thing with fire. Absol. The lore behind it is so freaking cool. Because of this Pokemon's ability to detect danger, people mistook Absol as a bringer of doom. Swift as the wind, Absol races through fields and mountains. Houndoom, they're literal hellhounds, and is two of my favorite types. I've always really loved Cyndaquil. I like porcupines and its design harkens to that, and I typically like the fire starters. What's criminally overpriced to you? Funerals. Printer ink. Any form of dental work. Why is it so much and not covered by dental insurance? I'm talking about you implants. Canadian here. It's definitely cost of mobile, internet plans. They're ridiculously overpriced and it makes me cry to see prices elsewhere. Edit. Thank you for all the awards. Fucking therapy man a decent therapist is hella expensive. College textbooks, they can cost hundreds of dollars, and professors will publish new ones all the time to force students to get the newest version instead of reusing an older one. Who are some singers who have a really unique voice or distinct style of singing? Vitas. At first you want to laugh, then you start to wonder if he's really human. Florence Welch of Florence and the Machine. Old dirty bastard, there ain't no father to his style. Hosier. His voice is incredible, so soulful, and easy to tell it's him. Aurora. Her voice is ethereal in the way she moves and shows emotion during her performances can seem strange at first but she's so endearing and soulful. Elliot Smith. That dude's voice can be heart-wrenching. Louis Prima had a very distinctive singing voice. It's hard to mistake him for anyone else.